Today, Hamming code. Made easy. Here's a typical exam question. You can see the reference to binary number. That means that we're going to represent all data, all messages with ones and zeros. This collection here of, of uh, columns of numbers is a Hamming matrix. Uh, I'm going to use this Hamming matrix because that's what the exam question is asked for. But once you've done this video, you'll be able to handle different different sorts of Hamming matrices. If you don't understand what a matrix is, don't worry, you can still get a lot of value out of this video. OK, to part A. You can see up the top left the Hamming matrix and the essential information for part A. Now encoding in Hamming code just means that we're going to add three check digits to the end of the number. We're going to add X, Y and Z. Then we're going to find X, Y, Z by solving this matrix equation and we're then going to simplify x, y and z by saying that if x is x, y, z are even then we're going to represent them with a zero and if they're odd we're going to represent them with a one. So some of you will, will recognize this as mod 2 arithmetic. Okay so we've got our matrix equation. That really just involves solving three simultaneous equations. So it's interesting to know that Hamming code at, at its core is really solving three simultaneous equations. So here are the three simultaneous equations and let's now clean this up and see what we get for x, y and z. So we can see that 1 plus 1 plus x equals 0, 1 plus y equals 0 and 1 plus z equals 0. So that means that x equals minus 2, y equals minus 1, z equals minus 1. And remember, odd numbers are 1, even numbers are 0. So x equals 0, y equals 1, z equals 1. And we now just add those three check digits onto the 1, 0, 1, 0. And we have our answer. And so the answer is 1, 0, 1, 0 is encoded to 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, on to part B. Decode double one triple zero one zero. You might like to think that you're at home on your computer and a message comes in double one triple zero one zero and you want to work out whether there is an error in the data that's been sent to you. Now if you think back to part A, the person who sent you this message would have had four numbers and then would have added the three check digits. So if there is no change when the message is transmitted, we would expect that when we multiply the, ma the Hammond matri matrix by this seven digit number that we'll get zero, zero, zero. So let's have a look and see what happens. We get these three simultaneous equations and they all total two and two's even so they're all zero. So this tells us that the message has come through without any problems, there's no errors and so the answer is there is no error, the message is 1100. Before we go to part C I just wanted to explore a little bit what would have happened had the message not come in um, as we had in part B. Let's imagine that there was an error, and so what we got in was the message 1110010. So the person who sent the message had the third digit at zero, but somehow in the transmission it ended up becoming a one. Well, what would then happen if you look at the simultaneous equations is that instead of these zeros here that I've marked, they would all be ones. And you can see here then if we work out the first equation that we would get 3 which is odd so that's 1. The second equation would be 3 as well and so that's odd that would be 1 and the third equation is unchanged um, and so that would give you 0. So we'd end up with 1 1 0 which is not equal to 0 0 0 and therefore we know that there is an error. Okay on to part C decode one zero triple one zero one. You can be pretty sure with these sort of questions that if there's two parts of decoding one of them is going to have an error. So that's my bet. Let's see how, what happens here. 
Okay, so as we did in part B, we multiply the matrix by the seven digit number. And you can see the three equations down the bottom. And this time we get uh, three and two and three. And three is one, two is zero. So the numbers end up being one, zero, one. So at this stage, we know that there is an error. The question is, where is the error? So let's just imagine it may, let's explore what happens if it was the middle digit, that one. You can see I've circled there. You can see what happens with that one. It appears down in the three equations where the one is multiplied by the digits of the fourth column of the Hamming matrix, the 0, 1, 1. So if I change that one that's circled to a zero, you can see because I've got 0, 1, 1, all it's going to change is the second and the third equation. If you look across at what I've got, 1, 0, 1, there's no way I can just change the second and third equation and end up with 0, 0, 0. So it's clear that it can't be the fourth digit. So here's how you find which column it is. We'll take the 1, 0, 1 and I'll move it across underneath the matrix. And now I look at each column of the Hamming matrix and I look to find the column that has 1, 0, 1. I call that the nth column and then the error must be in the nth digit of the message. So in this case, the 1, 0, 1 appears in the first column of the Hamming matrix. So therefore the first digit of the message is incorrect. So the answer is there is an error and the correct message is 0011. And now we see the real beauty of Hamming code. By adding just three check digits, we can determine if there's an error and if there is an error, we can find it and correct it. That's it for Hamming code made easy. I hope you found it useful.